Hey gang, it's James again with TFB TV and I have kind of an oddball review for you today. This is the EAA Vindicator. First of all, let me say right out of the gate, I'm pretty upset about the fact that they decided to call this the Vindicator and I'm assuming that's what they call it because with what little I know of the German language, the you pronounce a W like a V and so this is the Vindicator because they decided to spell it Windicator. I, I don't know who did that. I don't know why they thought it was a bad idea. I don't know if they thought it was cute. I don't know if I'm missing something and it's going over my head, but I think it's kind of a silly name. Uh, and maybe they did it to emphasize that this gun is made in Germany because it is. It's made by H. Weirach Melstrip. Fuck it. I don't know how to say that. And if you check it out, it's even got proof marks on the frame right above the serial number. In any event, I'm assuming it's the Vindicator, but I guarantee you that every single person where I'm from in Northwest Florida, when they go into a gun store and they see one of these, they say, hey man, can you let me see that Vindicator? Let's get to the more important stuff. What is this gun? It's a 38 357. This is a two inch model, two inch barrel, snub nose. It's got a six round capacity and man, is this thing heavy clocking in at 29 ounces. Pretty incredible for a snub nose gun. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. While I wouldn't want to carry a gun this size that weighs 29 ounces, almost two pounds, that's insane. I will say that a heavier gun like this is going to be able to sap up recoil a little bit better for 38 or 357. This might make a decent truck gun. It might make a good range gun, maybe something to backpack with. And to be honest with you, this isn't the best construction I've ever seen, but I've certainly seen a lot worse. And here's the thing, guys. The MSRP on this gun is like 350 bucks, but I see it street price for like 250 bucks. And I'm not sure you can do better in the $250 range if you're looking for a six shot 357 Magnum in a snub nose configuration like this. It doesn't look that bad. As you might expect, it's got very rudimentary bluing. It's not all that great to look at. The grips work, you can get all three of your support fingers on there and there's even a little thumb shelf, so that's not too bad. The trigger is heavy for double action, but the single action is pretty reasonable. The cylinder release works fine, the ejector and the ejector rod work fine. It's got a pretty robust ejector rod. And again, gang, really not much to look at, but I have read some reviews online. People seem to love this thing for the price, and I'm willing to give it a spin today on TFB TV. So let's go try it out. All right, let's try 38 out of this guy. See if this piece of junk can really move. Got a B27 target. We're here at, I don't know, 25, 30 feet. Let's see what she can do. That's pretty good. I'll take it. This trigger doesn't do you any favors. It's pretty awful. Casings don't want to come out either. Um, trigger's bad. I mean, that's it. It's bad. But for a $250 gun, I can live with that. Let's do this one more time, single action. Again, I mean, keeping it tight, nice tight group. It's going a little low and to the right, probably a byproduct again of the trigger, but it's shooting well and this gun's heavier than hell. So it being 29 ounces, it saps up a lot of that recoil, almost two pounds. So 38's like nothing. This actually is pretty comfortable to shoot. The grip's really not that bad. I could stand for it to be a little bit spongier. It's kind of a, a harder rubber, almost a plastic but it gets the job done, you know, it's fine. All right, 357 Magnum.
gosh. Definitely kicks a little bit more. This is certainly less comfortable to shoot with 357 Magnum than it is with 38, but it still could be a lot worse. I mean, definitely opens it up a little bit, open up the spread a little bit, but for the most part, it's performing well. I mean, you can see all the shots, center of mass, exactly where I'm pointing. All right, guys, so final thoughts on the Vindicator. All in all, I guess bottom line, it's a pretty decent revolver for $250 street price. It's made in Germany, but I don't, it's funny, this must be the crappiest thing they make in Germany. <laughs> But it's really, again, not that bad for 250 bucks. So to talk about my concealed carry rating system real quick, uh, seven categories, one to seven is the score. Uh, seven times seven is 49. Then I have a tilt point, that's 50. Multiply it by two, and that's your score. So uh, category one, trigger. The trigger on this gun is, it's not that great. Double action's kind of crappy. And single action is not too bad. It's not too bad. This might be a fool's errand trying to get the Double action weight, yep, over. There's no way we're gonna be able to get the double action weight in this. Yeah, that's what I figured, right around five pounds. Yeah, pretty heavy for single action on a revolver, but again, $250 gun, right? Uh, the trigger itself is pretty blocky, pretty sharp, so it's not very comfortable to use, but it does have some striations to give you a little bit of grip. So it's not that bad. I guess all in all, I can say that the trigger is a four and a half on this gun. Now moving to the sights, it, you just have a standard U sight in the back, fixed U sight, and it's ramped, so uh, it's kind of anti-snag. In fact, this is a lower profile sight than you see on most revolvers, even the adjustable revolvers, adjustable sight revolvers like Smith & Wesson, Ruger, and so on. So that's a nice little touch for carry, and you also have a smooth front ramp. Unfortunately, there's no contrast between the two, so it's black on black. And you also have, you do have striations that run fore to aft on the top of the gun to reduce glare. Um, I guess if you just popped a little paint on there, it wouldn't be that bad. Five. Value, another category, value, and that's kind of where this gun shines. I've got to, I got to give it a six and a half. For $250, you're getting a pretty highly performing revolver uh, for $250, again. And as you can see, in terms of performance, I took all these shots, 357, 38, just kind of casual fire at the 10 yard line and it did pretty well you know put a lot of them on the x most of them in the 10 and then maybe had a couple that wandered into the nine ring so for performance i'll give it a five as far as fit and finish goes you know it's not that great the fitment's all right it's uh, definitely better than anything else in its class and it's just got regular bluing for the finish you could definitely tell the stuff would rust it's not going to last a summer here in louisiana so uh, fit and finish, I'm gonna have to say a four and a half. Mechanics, uh, the, the, it works all right. Um, in fact, I've seen worse ejector rods on more expensive guns. So the ejector rod's good, it works. And then you've got the uh, cylinder release lever that's, uh, it works well enough, it's pretty good. The hammer spurs got some pretty good checkering on it. So mechanics are not bad. Carrying efficiency, this thing's a hog. Um, it, it is a six round 357, but all steel and it weighs a ton. It's almost two pounds, 29 ounces, but it does come in a relatively small profile. So all in all, it's not that bad in terms of concealed carry, just a little on the Husky side. So I can't give it more than a five. Mm, I'm gonna have to dial it down to a four and a half. I mean, that is really heavy. 29 ounces is really heavy. Uh, you can get guns that weigh half as much that shoot 357. Now they're gonna cost twice as much, three times as much, 
but that's really heavy. So I'm going to say four and a half. So in any event, I'll put the score up here. I don't know what it is. I'm pretty sure it probably got somewhere like in the seventies or something, which is about what this gun is. If I had to rate it, I'd give it like a 70 to a 75. And I'm not going to scoff at this thing. It, uh, it's not that great, but it works and it performs well. So if you're thinking about picking up one of these, I guess I would say check it out first. And you gotta be careful with stuff like this, especially the uh, strict import stuff, because you know it could be out of production next year and you're never gonna have any support on it, never gonna be able to find parts. I couldn't locate any accessories for it. So you have to kind of beware of that. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this really weird off the wall episode of TFB TV, reviewing this obscure and inexpensive gun. I'm sure if you're looking for an inexpensive revolver, our partner Proxy Bid will have a ton for you to check out, so be sure to give them a look. And if you need 38 or 357 to feed it, head to our boys at Ventura Munitions. They'll hook you up. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Thank you to our subscribers. Thank you to our Patreon supporters most of all, and I will see you guys next week.